going on everyone got a brand new movie review for you guys today and today i'm discussing bad times at the el royale bad times at the el royale is directed and written by drew goddard one of the best and most brilliant unique writers in hollywood right now the guy developed cabinet in the woods directed and wrote the hell out of that movie and i feel like that film flips the horror genre on its back slaps it on the ass and said hey we're gonna be something different and i was really expecting from this mystery crime thriller to be something different in the sense in some styles it is and it does feel like a drew goddard movie but I can't help feel, but I was a little bit disappointed. I went into this movie wanting to love it, came out of it really liking it, but definitely not up there to where I'm like, man, this is an amazing film, but still a film that I would easily recommend. There's a lot of reasons to recommend it, but what is Bad Times of the El Royale about? Well, Bad Times of the El Royale is about seven strangers, each with a secret to bury, meet at a Lake Tahoe's El Royale, a rundown hotel with a dark past, and over the course of one fateful night, everyone will have a last shot at redemption before everything goes to hell. And man, everything did go to hell in this movie. This film is a blast to watch. Even though I said I was a little bit disappointed, I wanted something a little bit different because this film does feel like a better version of Hateful Eight in a sense, which I still really enjoy the Hateful Eight, but maybe it's just because I like the way that these stories are structured. It's very much this film, if you've seen Hateful Eight, it's structured in that same way where it goes by an Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4 chapter kind of basis where it gives you a cue card, says what it's going to tell you, and that's the story that it starts to develop. And it twists and turns that happen within this movie all end up going to one another and connecting to some sort of way by the end of this movie. Because each of these seven strangers do have a different type of story to tell and understand why they're all at this hotel. They're not, they don't know each other. They're seven strangers. That's the point. But they all have something secret. And learning about each secret is very interesting to say the least that's something that drew Goddard does a really good job of is developing each and every one of these characters to a sense maybe you don't care about each and every one of them and maybe some of them are even scumbags and you could really care less about them but he does his best to make you understand their motives and what they're going through which is something that the actors and actresses do such a good job of portraying in here i mean you have such an all-star cast in here leading chris hemsworth john ham jeff bridges and Dakota Johnson, just all four really fantastic actors and actresses in there. Really, Chris Hemsworth, again, the guy's bleeding with charisma. It's nice to see him kind of do more of a villainous role in here, and I liked what they do with him. Dakota Johnson is nice to see her out of something of just Fifty Shades. And, of course, John Hamm, again, the guy, he's charismatic. He, he's one of the most charismatic actors in Hollywood. You just believe every word that comes out of his mouth. And Jeff Bridges, what can I say about Jeff Bridges? He's one of the best actors in Hollywood. He always has been ever since he's come onto the spotlight. And he brings that great dynamics that he always brings. Two newbies in this film that I've never really seen in film before is Lewis Pullman, who plays Miles. He's the bellhopper for the hotel. And he is awesome in this movie he has some of the best dialogue moments in here where drew goddard again does such a good job of keeping you on the edge of your seat while you're sitting there going oh what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next and there's some comedic moments intertwined in there where it keeps you with a smile on your face but also suspensed and it keeps you having a blast while watching this movie and Lewis pullman had some some of the most great comedic dialogue in here and good comedic timing where it's a very suspenseful and thrilling moment and also a very dramatic and serious moment, but it's that dialogue that he delivered so well that Drew Goddard wrote so well. And it's one of these moments about where he's telling a story about a wolf and I just could not help but laugh. And I know, I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't supposed to, but I, I felt like it was just so intertwined into the story in such a great way. And Drew Goddard, again, does such a good job intertwining that into the story in those little moments that work so well, just like he did within Cabin in the Woods. To be honest, Cynthia Irvio, the girl who plays Darlene Sweet in here, a singer who's just trying to get ahead of her career, is superb i think she was easily probably my favorite character in this movie and maybe some people won't like her character that much but i just found myself very connected to her she's one of the only characters in here that isn't a scumbag in a sense and you just get what she's wanting you get what she's trying to go out for and i just adored her character in the way that she portrayed it as well and my god she has a beautiful singing voice let's just put it out there at times of the el royale is not a perfect movie this is where i go to say i think there's 20 to 30 minutes i could easily been have snipped out of this movie and some of the character choices could have easily been interesting twine and changed um dakota johnson's character is in here emily she has a sister in here which i feel like could have been completely written out on another draft of the script and tinkered that story a little bit more to fit her story better it just felt very foreshadowed ever since and it i literally felt like deadpool i went there i saw a moment i was like foreshadowing really just threw it right in front of me and that's one of the few things that i didn't like about the story and a lot of that takes up 20 to 30 minutes of this movie that again 
entertaining, enjoyable, but could have been snipped out and was not needed. Would have rather spent more time with some of the other characters in the El Royale. Chris Hemsworth, the character I would have really liked to have spent more time with. John Hamm, again, another one of those characters. Even Dakota Johnson, I would have liked a little bit more of. Honestly, one of the best things about this film is the mythology of the hotel. They don't layer out everything about what's going on within the hotel, but there are a lot of cool things about this hotel. And I'm a big mythology person. When you build up something, every single thing about it, and it's a unique hotel story. I like what you get to see within the El Royale, and I would have liked a little bit more of it. Again, that's where I kind of go into this. This is a movie you're not going to find out everything you want to know. There are some questions I left the theaters. I understand what happened in the story, but there's some questions that I was like, okay, but what about this? What was that? Oh, what was this? What was that? And you leave there thinking, do I need to put that together? Is that stuff that I wasn't supposed to know because not every single character knew? And was I supposed to feel like one of the strangers that just ended up showing up and, and ending up finding out what each and every other character know about each other? Because it really does make you feel like a stranger within this hotel and figuring out and watching it from different perspectives of them. And like you're just right behind them watching what they're doing. It's a unique style that Drew Goddard ends up telling the story within, and I appreciate that for what it was. I feel like, though, you, you should have gone into more detail about certain other things within this and left other things vague. That's just my personal opinion. Definitely Bad Times at the El Royale is a very fun time at the movies. It's a unique crime thriller that I absolutely enjoyed the hell out of. A little bit disappointed because I would have liked a little bit more from it. I expected to love the movie, but I still can definitely recommend this movie with fantastic performances, with a very intriguing concept, and a unique storytelling style where you're going to be laughing, you're going to be on the edge of your seat, and you're going to feel suspense. Much one of those great blockbuster crime thrillers where you're on the edge of your seat having a blast watching the movie. That's what Bad Times at the El Royale is. So with all that said, I'm going to give Bad Times of the Ale Royale a B. Guys, tell me what your guys' thoughts are down below in the comments about Bad Times of the Ale Royale. Are you guys excited for this movie? Have you guys seen it already? Let's talk about it down below in the comments. Of course, if you're new here and you guys want to go see some movies early, go hit up Sandwich on Films also down below because right down there, that's where you guys can get into those advanced movie screens. You can also check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. But of course, guys, until next time, stay classy.